Hello dear nurses, I am Swadhi Jesh, uh, nurse trainer, BMAX Academy. So today also I am coming with some uh, frequently asking MCQs with the proper explanations. So we can uh, go for the questions. First question is, the nurse is administering tuberculin test purified protein derivative PPD. Which of the following time frames should the nurse tell the patient to return to the clinic for the test to be read? So option 1, 12 to 24 hours, option 2, 24 to 36 hours, option C, 36 to 48 hours, option D, 48 to 72 hours. So here for TB test we are using this Mandos test with PPD, purified protein derivative. We are giving intradermally 0.1 ml. Okay, so after giving this injection, uh, we are tell to the patient that you, want, you need to come back to the clinic after 48 to 72 hours for the proper reading. So you, we can see uh, in the injection side there is induration. Okay, so there is an induration in the injection side. We can say the Mandos test is positive. If there is no induration, we can say test is negative. Okay, so we can go for the next question. The nurse is caring for a child who is post tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy. The nurse should plan to assess which of the following complications. Pulmonary hypertension, hemorrhage, hearing loss, throat infection. So here the answer is B. Hemorrhage. Why the answer is hemorrhage means for the patient with tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy main complication is hemorrhage. How we can assess the hemorrhage in tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy patient means we can see the swallowing pattern of the patient. This patient, the patient will be frequently swallowing. Another question we can expect from this area is when we can do the tonsillectomy. So tonsillectomy we can do as a criteria there is an infection tonsillitis occurs three times in one year. Okay. Three times in one year, there is an infection in tonsils, we can do the tonsillectomy. Okay, we can go to the next question. Patient is, who is preparing for hip surgery has an order for external pneumatic compression devices. The nurse teaches the patient that pneumatic compression can help to prevent upper respiratory tract infection, decreased breath sounds, deep vein thrombosis, bleeding at the surgical site. So here the answer is deep vein thrombosis. Okay, so we know uh, continuous immobilized patient or major hip surgeries and all there will be chances of getting deep vein thrombosis. You can see in this picture, this is pneumatic compression device. So it will help to prevent DVT. So always uh, they will ask about further managements of uh, or intervention to prevent deep vein thrombosis. We need to prevent cross legging, uh, frequent mobilization needed, exercise needed. So frequently asking questions from this area is important. Okay, so we can go to next question. So which of the following test measures the total quantity of prothrombin time in blood and monitors the effectiveness of warfarin sodium therapy and prolonged deficiencies in extrinsic factor. Thrombin time, prothrombin time, partial prothrombin time, activated partial thromboplastin time. So here the answer is partial prothrombin time. So what is warfarin sodium and what, what is heparin sodium? Warfarin sodium is oral anticoagulant and heparin sodium is intravenous anticoagulant. So here the heparin is we can, uh, we can use in pregnant ladies safely. In warfarin we are not usually uh, using in uh, pregnant ladies because it is cross as the placenta. Okay, so it, it is like a teratogenic effect also. So the main uh, question they are asking about heparin and warfarin and their antidotes. Okay, so antidote of heparin is protamine sulfate and antidote of warfarin is vitamin K. Okay, so we can go to next question. While caring for a patient with a potassium deficiency, the nurse should expect the patient may exhibit dysarrhythmias, oliguria, diminished deep tendon reflexes and hypertension. So here the answer is dysrhythmias. So mainly the potassium is main electrolyte in our body. It, it is increase or decrease it will causes 
many lethal problems okay so what is the normal uh, value of potassium 3.5 to 5.5 is the normal value of potassium so here if there is less than 3.5 is hypokalemia and more than 5.5 is hyperkalemia so in two conditions hypokalemia and hyperkalemia also there is a chances of getting dysrhythmias okay balance you can see in this picture what is the signs and symptoms occur in hyperkalemia and hypokalemia you can write the notes and study okay we can move on to the next question when discussing dietary choice with the patient who is receiving heparin therapy the nurse should state that which of the following food affect the clotting time so high protein foods soy based fruits food high in vitamin k food containing goat's milk so the answer here is food high in vitamin k so we know vitamin k is an Uh, natural coagulant okay so here heparin we are using in the patient for the action purpose of anti coagulant if we are administering an anti coagulant along with vitamin k contained food we are giving means there is an opposing action so there, there that's why we are not giving uh, vitamin k contained foods along with this heparin therapy okay we can move on to the next question toxicity from which the following medication may cause the client to see green yellow halo around the lights okay so the options digoxin prusamide metoprolol and enapril so here the answer is digoxin so after taking digoxin the rest of this toxicity occurs means we can see a green yellow light when we are seeing something there is a green yellow light around that so that is the toxicity we can give dg bind for the antidote purpose okay so here prusamide also prusamide means it is a loop diuretic for giving prusamide just we need to check the bp okay so the bp is uh, decreasing as a side effect of prusamide always we need to check the bp before and after giving prusamide okay we can move on to the next question which of the following site nurse should avoid to take temperature if the patient has heart attack oral rectal tympanic axillary so here the answer is rectal okay rectal temperature mainly we need to avoid in patient with cardiac disorders mainly cardiac disorders that will causes cardiac arrhythmias and uh, even heart attack also because of vagus nerve stimulation so always we need to avoid this rectal temperature in patient with cardiac failures or cardiac related problems okay we can move on to the next question the nurse assist with lumbar puncture on a child with a suspect bacterial meningitis if the diagnosis is correct the cerebral spinal fluid should have which of the following qualities so high glucose level low protein level cloudy or turbid appearance pink or blood tinged appearance so here the answer is cloudy or turbid appearance in bacterial meningitis we can see cloudy appearance and viral means we can see clear appearance of the csf and blood tinged means there is any subarachnoid hemorrhages clear so here we need to assess some of the characteristics of csf with many conditions you can see in this table clearly what is the difference between normal csf and abnormal csf if there is affected by tb or bacterial uh, meningitis or viral kind of diseases of uh, many kind of diseases it will be changes okay we can move on to the next question changes in personality and judgment are often associated with lesion in which of the following frontal lobe parietal lobe broca's area and wernicke's area so here the answer is frontal lobe so personality changes and judgmental will be uh, major function of frontal lobe so here you can see the major functions of each lobe and next picture you can see here the uh, broca's area function uh, wernicke's area function so this also you can see in this picture just uh, take your notes and study well okay we can move on to the next question a hospitalized patient has fallen from bed the nurse has shortening of the left leg pain upon movement of the left leg and a rapid swallow respiration what action should the nurse take first so here the clear evidence of fracture 
the options are call for help immobilization the left leg obtain blood pressure evaluate lung sound so the answer will be immobilize the left leg so in case of fractures we need to first move immobilize the extremity particular extremity we need to immobilize and splinting needed here in this question we can see left leg fracture as a result of fall so we can give an immobilization or splinting okay so next we can go to next question if a patient develop a complication during a blood transfusion the nurse first action should to do stop the transfusion notify the practitioner administer an antihistamine administer an anti inflammatory medication so there is an infusion reaction after administration of a blood transfusion we need to stop the blood okay so we need to uh, stop the transfusion as a first priority when there is having a transfusion reaction okay we can move on to the next question home care nurse reviews the laboratory result for a postpartum patient who had a cesarean section which of the following indicate possible wound infection increased wbc decreased hematocrit level increased hem hemoglobin and decreased platelet here the answer is increased wbc so in postpartum sepsis so what is postpartum sepsis we can see here postpartum sepsis we can divided into two types so primary postpartum means within 24 hours occurs if there is any infection of fever before 24 hours means there is a chances of dehydration because of the dehydration the patient is getting this fever kind of symptoms so we need to apply more uh, fluids or iv fluids or if the patient is tolerating we can provide oral fluids also then after 24 hours means there is a chances of sepsis that time there will be elevation of wbc in any kind of infection in our body there will be first increasing the wbc if we are checking our body fluids there is increased wbc we can see in infection cases we can go on to the next question which of the following can be used to determine if the prescribed blood sore ulcer for a bed ridden patient papni color test faces rating scale braden scale abgar assessing tool so here papni color test is pap smear we can do for cervical cancer and uh, faces rating scale mainly you, we can used to for pain scale reading in children and braden scale mainly we can use for this bed sore assessment so braden scale mainly we can so use for bed sore assessment there is so many criteria are there you can see in this picture then you can take the notes from this so abgar score you you know in newborn assessment we are doing this abgar scoring so today session i am stopping here uh, i hope you all are understanding my class if you want to know uh, more about uh, bmax classes and uh, uh, bmax uh, notes and like this videos question answer section you can follow us in the youtube and other social media accounts thank you Oh